piece tonight. I want to talk about, you know, how do we build our offensive system off of our counter gap scheme? Um, when you ask me what's my favorite scheme in the run game, I'm a gap scheme guy. And I build kind of – that's kind of the starting blocks of point A where we kind of build and, and, and expand uh, on our offensive scheme. And so um, why I believe in gap schemes is because it minimizes um, negative plays. Uh, the third number one uh, – the third pillar that we, that we obviously um, focus on. Uh, it creates explosive plays, our number two uh, pillar in that deal. And then it allows us to block uh, schemes versus movement, right? It's simple. Easy rules for your offensive line, being able to block with favorable leverage and angles, um, whether that's double teams, whether that's down blocks, whether that's back blocks, um, it allows you to play with angles, um, but it also allows you to being able to ha handle answers for movement. So now you no longer have to force an RPO on a call or uh, block versus edge pressure, have all these extra calls that your offensive line has got to account for a plus one scenario. Um, it allows them to block the same picture. Um, by doing it extremely well. Now, whatever you believe in, you have to make sure the numbers stand behind it. Uh, and you see here, these are numbers uh, at the previous institution I was at. Uh, and a lot of our tapes going to carry over from there as everyone kind of um, sees the identity of our team now here in Miami. Um, but last year, you know, I had 61 counter gap scheme calls, right? They were 50% efficient. Um, you see the average uh, yard per gain at 8.64. Um, we always track our TFL and no game percentage at 656. Six. And when we talk about our, our, our negative plays, we also could throw in there no gainers, right? A lot of people want to focus on TFLs and sacks, um, but I want to know how many runs are we going for no game? Um, because every play should be a positive play for us, okay? Um, and then you obviously see the explosive play percentage being, you know, 21% there, and that's, that's runs 12 or more. And so uh, as I kind of get into it, right, our base way of our counter gap scheme, and like I said, it's, Obviously, previous fam of all my uh, previous years at the previous institution coordinating it. Uh, but see, this is our open side counter gap scheme. OK, so we're working it uh, to the open side. And one of the things that we do in our counter gap scheme uh, is we try to eliminate those TFLs by certain ways that we block counter gap scheme. This is our normal GY counter. Uh, but anytime we get a three technique to the front side, um, we make a me call um, by the center. So we no longer end up blocking back on a three technique. And what does that do? It allows you to eliminate. Uh, your center um, blocking back on poor angles. If it's a penetrating three technique, right, we don't want to have to block back on them. Um, but what it also allows is it allows the first kickout block to get up on the defensive end fast. And where that allows you to, to be able to be defined in your counter schemes is it creates distribution between your first, your first puller and your second puller. Uh, so it allows the tight end to be able to read around. Uh, you'll see right here our center is going to take a kick course path. He's going to hit it with the same side shoulder, same side leg, kind of kick and pry that thing open. Our second tight end is going to, going to read through that thing, okay? And he's initially thinking the center's taking a kick path, and he's going to read around and place his outside shoulder on the inside pad of the second-level defender. Um, we point it backside in our counter scheme, so he's pulling for uh, plus one. And you can see right here as we go through the mesh, simple, easy, me call for the center. Also allows – now, still on the backside, we're still what we call gap hinge, so everyone's going to step down to protect their inside gap if they get any type of – interior run through whether that's a weak uh, mike linebacker through the week a or b on the back side of this run right they're going to be able to protect it and stick on that guy until someone knocks them off back uh, one of the things that we love to do with our counter scheme is we love to run it to the open side okay so um a lot of people favor running you know counter to the three technique i favor running it to the two eye shade we love running power to the three technique being able to lift that double but we will have times where if we're running it at a three technique, we're going to try to find a way to influence the end so we don't get an end squeezing um, while we're trying to create movement with a double team. And I'll get to some of those clips here in a second. Uh, but it's a great job here by our backside tackle. As he comes down, he hits the hip of the two eye, and you see our guard is basically in a man scheme there. Um, now we're double under that guy with our hands inside and underneath the framework. And then we're going to hit the hip, right? And that backside tackle or that frontside tackle knows that if that linebacker runs over the top, he's just going to run him over the edge. And so – um, great scheme right here, and I'll kind of get fast forward through this deal as we get to the uh, to the good meat of everything as we get going here. Okay, uh, here's another clip right here. Obviously, counter gap scheme. You can do it from gun. You can do it from pistol. Um, here's a look right here. Okay, you're talking about having answers versus edge pressure. All right, so this is uh, Sam edge pressure off the front side edge. All right, and it's a gap scheme, right? So it's for the line. It's simple rules. They're blocking the gaps, right? They're never going to chase anything uh, looping out beyond them. Uh, and you see, here's a good picture right here, trying to bring edge pressure 
Um, we go and pistol expecting edge pressure. So we open our quarterback up to the field to slow down that edge pressure. Uh, and you'll see right here, this is a great job by the backside tackle, play side tackle here, staying on track. He's thinking he's going to initially work through to rub and hit the hip of the two eye. And all that basically runs and it converts itself to a running deuce on the go. And then you see 66, the play side guard, just climb to the next level. Uh, you take mine, I'll take yours. You know, understanding their schemes, right? We got to do a much better job staying a little bit low on the pad level of our initial kick. But once again, you can see coming through the pistol, our quarterback is going to give eyes to the Sam to hold him, make him think it's a read run. He hesitates his feet. Our second puller does a great job reading around that thing, right? And then getting up to the second level.